Hey everyone, today David has to make a hard choice with King Saul. Even as Saul returned from pursuing the Philistines, he was informed that David was in the Engedi wilderness. So Saul took 3,000 men selected from all Israel and went to look for David and his soldiers near the rocks of the wild goats. He came to the sheep pens beside the road where there was a cave. Saul went into the cave to cover his feet. And meanwhile, David and his soldiers were sitting in the very back of the cave. David's soldiers said to him, This is the day the Lord spoke of when he promised you, I will hand your enemy over to you and you can do whatever you want to him, whatever you think is best. So David snuck up and cut off a corner of Saul's, Saul's robe. But immediately David felt horrible that he had cut off a corner of Saul's robe. The Lord forbid, he told his men, that I should do something like that to my master, the Lord's anointed, or lift my hand against him, because he's the Lord's anointed. So David held his soldiers in check by what he said, and he wouldn't allow them to attack Saul. Saul then left the cave and went on his way. So you have Saul, who is God's anointed king, but God has now rejected him. And you also have David, who is anointed by God, and God is clearly with him. But right now he's actually on the run. He's kind of a, a refugee. So when we know what God wants, generally speaking, how do we know what God wants specifically? Right? God wants David to be king. Should David make that happen when he's given a very clear opportunity to do so? Now, his men certainly think so. Right? Notice how they put words in God's mouth. God promised he was going to let you do whatever you want to your enemy. Well, did he? We don't actually see that anywhere in the text. It's amazing how quick our assumptions about what God wants turn into, well, God directly told me this is what you should do. See, we all want to trust God, but... There's this tricky line we have to find between uh, just total passivity and taking things into our own hands. Right? Trust doesn't mean you do nothing, but trust also doesn't mean that you do everything you want. Now, the bigger biblical picture is that violence shouldn't be our first choice, or maybe even a choice at all. That's certainly easiest, right? We cut corners there by just cutting off the people that we don't like. And history is littered with people who have justified violence with, well, I'm sure God thinks it's okay. And, you know, David does go the peaceful route here, though. It's not really that David is a total man of peace. I mean, he's more often defined as a warrior. Uh, he's quick to use violence when it suits his needs, and sometimes he has to be talked out of it. And he may just be giving Saul a pass here because of his special status as God's anointed, right? God's going to have to take care of that. But... David's actions here, they do point us toward our true king, towards Jesus, who also chooses to shame the powerful rather than overpower him, just as David did by cutting off this corner and then telling Saul, hey, look what I could have done. Right? If Jesus could have called 10,000 angels from the cross, and yet he chose not to, and he chose forgiveness, how should we handle our enemies? If we really want to know what that trust looks like, let's look to Christ.